A little while ago we went to Iceland and we thought it would be nice to share with you about our trip. It was only a short stay of a few days but well worth it. We arrived quite late and took a bus from the airport to Reykjavik. It was early November so quite cold and dark. After a good night's sleep and breakfast, we decided to take a walk around Reykjavik, which is quite small, so it was easy to get around. Before we came, we'd been hearing about how expensive things are in Iceland. But looking at the prices, things weren't that different from back home. Reykjavik has a very different feel to it though. Certainly, even with the number of tourists who visit, it wasn't very crowded. And Reykjavik has some interesting painted buildings and many have corrugated cladding. One of the famous features is the Lutheran church called Hallgrimskaka, which I believe is named after the Icelandic poet and minister. Interestingly, the church was started in the 1940s and it took 41 years to complete. It is made to look like columns of volcanic basalt and is the highest church in Iceland. Standing outside the church is the statue of Lifra Eriksson, the famous Icelander who beat Columbus to the discovery of the Americas nearly 1100 years ago. We strolled around the tourist shops and found many quirky things. Around the city there are numerous works of art, statues and sculptures and of course a park with a lake that while we were there was mostly frozen. Head to the north of the centre and you come to the Harper Concert Hall and Conference Centre. It's an amazing building of steel and glass. Inside there is lots of open space as well as a gift shop. As you leave the Harper building, walking towards the east, you come across another interesting sculpture. It is the stainless steel Sun Voyager a stylish form like a Viking boat. The next day we went on a pre-booked tour, the Golden Circle day trip. We stopped to enjoy the Thillingver National Park. Here we can look across from America Tectonic Plate to the European Plate on the other side, as well as see the place where the Icelandic Parliament was set up back in 930 AD. You could see the geological fault line or cracked and broken rocks and also ancient lava flows. The next stop was Gutfuss Waterfalls, a two-tier waterfall that drops in steps, the first of 11 meters and the second of 21 meters.
and the river carries meltwater from a glacier. Here is probably the scene of the first ever environmental protest. The land around the falls was sought by a company who wanted to create a hydroelectric plant. The daughter of the landowner, Sigrida Thomasdutter, was determined to prevent this from going ahead. She even threatened to throw herself off the falls. One site that many come to Iceland for is the Giza Park. You can wait and watch the eruptions as the water is converted to steam and pushes back up under the pressure created. The final stop on this tour was the secret lagoon. Sadly, I cannot justify the name. There is nothing secret about it. Everyone knows it. It was once apparently a public swimming lagoon. However, we did enjoy it. We took a walk around it before going to soak in the hot waters. Beware, some areas of the pool are a little hot due to the events from underground. You can see small geysers around the pool too, as well as the geothermal heated greenhouse. Puffins are popular here. They're in all the souvenir shops but it is also considered food. You can buy soft cuddly ones or glass ones, plenty to choose from. We had the Blue Lagoon on our bucket list and it was a treat we gave ourselves for Mariana's birthday. Yes, the lifeguards do have to dress up warm. It was minus something after all. Everyone has to shower naked before they go in the water. This is some kind of rule. Strictly speaking, you have to come out of the water in a timely fashion, but we somehow managed to stay for quite a while. They give you some kind of skin mask, and you do have a choice of different ones though. And the water is actually the outflow from a geothermal power station. There are currently volcanic eruptions in this area. As this was our last night here, and Mariana's birthday was the next day, we had a meal in their restaurant. We were both impressed with the quality of the food that we ate here. We made our way to the airport the next afternoon, and from there onwards to home. Now, we had to be careful of some of the characters at the airport though. Photobomb has a very different meaning here. 